Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, it is safe to say that uh, <clears throat> Nintendo have, i uh, got to be careful uh, the way I put this in the first 30 seconds of a video on YouTube. Um, Nintendo have pocket pair by, uh, by the you-know-whats, <laughs> quite literally at the moment, as we shall see. So, today, the 25th of September, the recording of this video is the release of Power World on the PS5. Only, there is a notable exception. While the game is being launched worldwide, there is one region, and I guess you all watching can guess where it is, where the game will not be released. Yeah, surprise, surprise, that's Japan. And again, as with everything with this lawsuit, again, no one is confirming any particular details, but I mean, I think in this case, it's not just a guess. I think it's almost uh, rationally safe to assume it's because of the ongoing lawsuit. This also may give us some insight into the timing of Nintendo's lawsuit, which is something that a lot of people had been speculating about. Now, if we keep in mind that Japan is a gaming uh, world that is predominantly dominated by the PlayStation 5 and the Nintendo Switch, it might make sense for Nintendo to do this lawsuit to block the sale of PAL World onto the PS5 within the Japanese region because it would only really be at this stage due to the lack of Japanese gamers on PC. And then we take into account that currently within Japan, uh, Sony PlayStation 5 has a 95% market share of the console market. I think the rest is uh, Switch. And uh, when you remove the, the very small number of Japanese PC gamers, PlayStation 5 is really the only game in town or only console in town when it comes to gaming in Japan. And so Paul World's release on there is going to expose the Japanese gamer to what Nintendo feel is a massive moral slight. And so basically they launched the lawsuit when they did. They timed it in order to stop that release. That's what I'm thinking now. I think that's reasonable. I think we can almost assume that again from context. Of course, the irony of all this is that on the international stage where the game currently is available, to be uh, to be bought and played on the PlayStation 5 PlayStation Store that the huge hype around the uh, Nintendo lawsuit has probably revitalized some interest in the game abroad and a lot of people maybe that only game on PlayStation 5 and never got to play the title because they're not PC gamers but they might buy it when it's on the console store have now kind of had it, you know, reemerge onto their the feed of their their YouTube feed, their Reddit feed, etc. So they might be thinking about the game more. So it might actually help international sales, ironically. But then again, should Nintendo succeed in their lawsuit for damages, those are likely to be sales that Nintendo just ends up getting a cut of anyway. So, yeah, yeah, that that that's a silver lining, but it's a silver lining that also might just end up in Nintendo's pocket in the end. Now, in very related news, we've had some more details, not confirmed, but suspicions kind of congealed amongst the commentary community and amongst journalists. Take that for what you will take that for, uh, that we probably know at least one of the major patents that has been infringed by Power World. And, and many people in my, I think in my second video, I pointed this out and Asmongold pointed out, if you get lots of commentators notice this, we ever, a lot of people thought it had to be the PAL Sphere, aka Pokeball mechanic, and the similarities between the two of them. Uh, people have now looked up this patent. I'll put it on the screen for you now. And uh, in the patent, you can see they've just they've uh, they've patented Pokeballs. They literally have pocket pair by the Pokeballs. Other than the actual uh, design of the ball itself, which I think is more of a, a more of a cosmetic copyright infringement sort of thing, when we just look at the game mechanics, I can think of immediately a lot of games that have infringed upon this. Probably most notably, like a hundred or so quests in World of Warcraft that have the exact uh, walk forward, throw ball, wound thing thing gets sucked into device, um, and a lot of those World of Warcraft quests actually pay homage to. Uh, uh, to Pokemon, so, uh, but don't worry, I, I think there's no, there's no Blizzard versus Nintendo lawsuit pending. Uh, this was actually accelerated through the Japanese patent system by Nintendo. The suspicion is explicitly aimed at shutting down Pal World, the game, with the patent being filed this summer, given the release of Pal World was in mid-January. Basically, they took uh, a few months to write up the patent. Uh, they then filed it, and this has all been a slow process that seems to have begun 
with the launch of the game with Nintendo going through various machinations about how to shut them down. And uh, now we're at the stage where to block the PS5 release, they finally, uh, uh, you know, pulled the trigger on that lawsuit. This also goes back to something that I was saying a lot uh, to people in the comments of a few of my videos on this and, and trying to trying to emphasize in my, my other video on this is that one of the things people have to understand about the legal system is it doesn't really care about justice. It's about companies, in this case, achieving very specific ends and they will pick whatever means they have to do that. There were a lot of people that, uh, especially Nintendo defenders, that began kind of freaking out when it was revealed this was a design uh, and patent lawsuit. Uh, I think design is the Japanese word. Uh, anyways, the Nintendo defenders seem to take this as uh, some sort of like real huge nuance and that uh, they weren't suing Pal World because the game was similar to Pokemon. And I, almost all of the reasonable people responded with, yeah, but you could just make a list of patents that when you shove them all together is just you patented Pokemon absent any particular character design because copyright works differently um, for character designs. That doesn't stop you suing them over a similarity to Pokemon. And now we have it confirmed that all of these people were wrong. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, because uh, it, it, this is, this is, I, the Pokeball patent is probably gonna be one, but we, we know from Nintendo that they've said it's multiple patents. So I think when we get, if we do get all the info, we're gonna see that uh, Nintendo have just basically patented more or less everything ever that you could put in a game that's similar to Pokemon so that they can wield the hammer uh, to smash who they wish. Digimon fans run in fear, am I right? And another reason why it's probably only happening in Japan because you know, something very specific like the Nemesis system from Shadows of Mordor, I can see that copyright because that's a very sophisticated, very unique game system. The idea of having a magical capsule that steals the soul of a of a monster is super, super ubiquitous in games, and it was in games before Pokemon. Yeah, you know, I hate playing Internet Lawyer, but I just can't see some of these Nintendo very vague, very broad patents holding up in a U.S. court. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen, but they haven't tried to do that in this case. They're using it against another Japanese company. That's what I was saying in the other video about legal. The law is all about means to an end. And in this case, these kind of vague patents will work within Japanese courts. Also, if you read the comments from the last two videos I did on this, Japanese people culturally also have very, um, they have a, a lot more res respect, might be the wrong word, for intellectual property rights. And I think the attitude in Japan, at least from commenters on my videos, was much more, much more negative towards the people over at Pocket Pair. And as we know, you know, laws tend to often reflect the underlying uh, cultural substrate, the underlying cultural attitudes of the people within that society. But the long and short of it is Nintendo being Nintendo, and I think we can kind of, it's safe to say now, this will probably be the last video I make on this unless something super interesting happens. Nintendo really went with the jugular on this one. Instead of going after the similarities of the Pokemon designs, which probably would have been like a uh, DMCA-ish sort of copyright thing, they need to change the designs. They've gone after the guts of the game, the very nuts and bolts they've patented the Pokemon style game. And if anyone now makes a Pokemon style game, whether it's, it is a fan game or it is a indie studio or another AAA studio, whether or not that Pokemon like game is able to continue existing will, will be entirely, entirely at um, the whims of Nintendo. Uh, maybe Temtem should be very worried. Does anyone remember Temtem? Maybe not. All right. Uh, well, Thank you for watching and uh, like and subscribe if you want more game news, rants, and other things. And until then, I will see you in the next video.